The principle of the Megazum Fructane method, or AIC method 999.03, is shown in the slide. Samples containing fructan, starch, sucrose, maltose, and free fructose and glucose are treated with a mixture of enzymes, namely sucrase, beta amylase, pululinase, and maltase. These enzymes hydrolyze the starch, sucrose, and maltose completely to fructose and glucose, but have no action on the fructan. This sample then is treated with sodium borohydride and this reduces all the sugars, the fructose and glucose, to sugar alcohols. The solution is neutralized with acetic acid and adjusted back to approximately pH 4.5. The mixture then contains fructan and non-reducing sugar alcohols. This is treated with exoinulinase plus endoinulinase which hydrolyze the fructan completely to fructose and glucose. These are then measured with the PARBAR reducing sugar method to give the fructan content. A problem in applying AOAC method 999.03 to the measurement of fructan for partially degraded fructan samples is shown in this slide. In hydrolyzing the fructan to oligosaccharides with endoinulinase, reducing N groups are exposed these reducing end groups will be reduced to sugar alcohols by borohydride in the borohydride reduction step in the assay procedure. When these oligosaccharides are treated with exoinulinase, the terminal reducing sugar, which is now a sugar alcohol, will not be measured. This can lead to an underestimation of fractan of between 10 and 20 percent. This can be resolved if samples of the original fructooligosaccharides are available for analysis and standardization. The fructan kit as received should contain an instructions booklet, a bottle of sucrase plus beta amylase pululinase and maltase, a bottle of fructanase, fructan control flour, sucrose control flour and a defructose standard solution. Dissolve the contents of bottle 1 in 22 ml of buffer 1, which is sodium maleate buffer, 100 millimolar pH 6.5. This is termed enzyme solution A. Take care to dissolve all of the enzyme from the bottle. Divide this into aliquots of appropriate volume and store it minus 20 degrees centigrade. This enzyme is stable in polypropylene containers for greater than 5 years at minus 20 degrees centigrade. Dissolve the contents of vial 2, the fructanase enzyme mixture, in 22 ml of buffer 2, sodium acetate buffer, 100 millimolar pH 4.5. This is enzyme solution B. Take care to completely dissolve all of the fructanase enzyme mixture in the vial. Divide this enzyme solution into aliquots of appropriate volume and store it minus 20 degrees centigrade. This enzyme is stable in polypropylene containers for greater than 5 years at minus 20 degrees centigrade.
Use the contents of bottle 3, fructant control flour, bottle 4, sucrose control flour, and bottle 5, fructose standard solution, as supplied. Prepare sodium maleate buffer and sodium acetate buffer as described in the booklet. The sodium hydroxide and acetic acid solutions are prepared according to the instructions in the booklet. Sodium borohydride is pre-weighed into polypropylene tubes. Add 10 grams of parahydroxybenzoic acid hydroxide parbar, to 60 mils of distilled water in a 250 ml beaker on a magnetic stirrer. To stir the slurry and add 10 mils of concentrated hydrochloric acid, allow this to stir until the par bar completely dissolves. Transfer the solution to a measuring cylinder and adjust the volume of the solution to 200 mils with distilled water. Transfer this solution to a Durand bottle and store at room temperature. It's stable for two years at room temperature. Prepare Parbar Solution B by adding 24.9 grams of trisodium citrate dihydrate to 500 mils of distilled water and stir this until it dissolves. Then add 2.2 grams of calcium chloride dihydrate and dissolve this by stirring. Then add 40 grams of sodium hydroxide and also dissolve this with stirring. The solution may be milky, but it will clarify when the solution is diluted to 2 litres. Transfer this solution to a 2 litre measuring cylinder. Wash out the beaker with distilled water and then adjust the volume to 2 litres with distilled water. Transfer this solution to a 2 litre Durand bottle. The solution is stable at room temperature for approximately 2 years. Prepare Parbar working reagent immediately before use by adding 180 ml of Parbar solution B to a 300 ml beaker and then add 20 ml of Parbar solution A. Mix this solution thoroughly. This solution is stable for approximately 4 hours when stored on ice.
Prepare alkaline borohydride solution by adding 5 ml of 50 millimolar sodium hydroxide to 50 mg of pre-weighed sodium borohydride in a polypropylene tube. Mix well. Use this solution soon after preparation. For samples containing 0 to 12 percent fractan, accurately weigh one gram of sample into a dry Pyrex beaker of 100 mL capacity. For samples containing 12 to 50 percent fractan, accurately weigh 100 mg of the sample into a dry Pyrex beaker of 100 mL capacity. To samples of 1 gram, add 80 ml of hot distilled water. Have the water at approximately 80 degrees centigrade. Place the beaker on a hot plate magnetic stirrer and stir with heating at approximately 80 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes or until the sample is completely dispersed. Allow the solution to cool to room temperature and then quantitatively transfer it to a 100 ml volumetric flask. Use a water wash bottle to wash the remainder of sa the sample into the flask. Adjust the volume to 100 ml with distilled water. Mix the contents thoroughly. For samples of 100 mg, add 40 ml of hot distilled water and place the beaker on a hot plate magnetic stirrer and again stir with heating at approximately 80 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes. For samples of 100 mg, perform the same operation but transferring the solution to a 50 ml volumetric flask and adjusting to volume. Filter an aliquot of the solution through a Wattman No. 1 9 cm filter circle. These solutions should be analysed immediately. The solutions may be slightly turbid depending on the nature of the sample extracted, but this is not a problem. Accurately dispense a 0.2 mL aliquot of each of the solutions to be analysed, which contain between 0.1 and 1 mg per mL of fractan into the bottom of a glass test tube of 16 by 100 millimetres dimension. Add 0.2 mL of diluted sucrase amylase solution, enzyme solution A, to each of the tubes Mix the contents thoroughly on a vortex mixer and incubate the tubes at 40 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. Add 0.2 ml of reagent 3 alkaline borohydride solution to the tube.
Stir the tubes vigorously on a vortex mixer and incubate them at 40 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. This will affect the complete reduction of reducing sugars to sugar alcohols. Add 0.5 mL of reagent 4, 200 millimolar acetic acid, to the tube with vigorous stirring on a vortex mixer. A vigorous effervescence should be observed. This treatment removes excess borohydride and adjusts the pH to approximately 4.5. This is termed solution S. Accurately and carefully transfer 0.2 mL aliquots of solution S for each sample into the bottom of three glass test tubes of dimension 16 by 100 mm. The solution must be transferred to the bottom of the tube to ensure that it comes in complete contact with the next enzyme added, the fructinase solution. Add 0.1 ml of fructinase solution, enzyme solution B, to two of the tubes for each of the samples. Add 0.1 mL of 100 millimolar sodium acetate buffer to the third tube from each sample. This is the sample blank. Seal each of the tubes with parafilm. Stir the tube contents and incubate the tubes at 40 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes to affect complete hydrolysis of fructan to defructose and deglucose. With each set of determination, reagent blanks and fructose controls must be included and analyzed concurrently. The reagent blank consists of 0.3 mL of 100 mL sodium acetate buffer, buffer 2 and 5 mL of par bar working reagent. The fructose standard solution is prepared according to the booklet. Remove the tubes from the 40 degree water bath and also remove the parafilm from each tube. Add 5 ml of parbar working reagent to all tubes, the samples, the sample blanks, the fructose standard reagent blank and the fructose cellulose control sample if included. Mix the tube contents thoroughly on a vortex mixer. Incubate the rack of tubes in a boiling water bath for exactly 6 minutes. After exactly 6 minutes, remove the tubes from the boiling water bath and immediately place the rack in a cold water bath uh, or an ice water bath and leave there for approximately 5 minutes. Measure the absorbance of all solutions at 410 nanometers against the reagent blank. This includes the sample, the sample blanks, and the fructose standard solution. The 
the calculations associated with the measurement of fractone as shown in this slide. The factor delta A is the sample absorbance value minus the sample blank absorbance value, both read against the reagent blank. F is a factor to convert from absorbance values to micrograms of defractose. Or it equals 54.5, which is the micrograms of defractose used, divided by the absorbance for that 54.5 micrograms of defractose in the Parbar reaction. 5 is a factor to convert from 0.2 mils as assay to 1 mil. V is the volume in mils of the extractant used, i.e. 50 or 100 mils. 1.1 over 0.2 means 0.2 mils was taken from 1.1 mil of enzyme digest for analysis. W is the weight in milligrams of the sample extracted. 100 over W is a factor to express the fractan as a percentage of flour weight. 1 over 1,000 is a factor to convert from micrograms to milligrams. And 162 over 180 is a factor to convert from free fractose as determined to anhydrofractose and anhydroglucose as occurs in fractan. These calculations can be greatly simplified by using the Megasum MegaCalc calculator which is downloadable from the Megasum web website where the product appears.